Hello Pyro Enthusiast, Plato here and today we will finally be looking at the long-awaited Pyromancer Guide. Surprise, it's an eruption build. Now I know pretty much the majority of Pyro Guides are for eruption, but as you all know, this version will have the usual Plato deep dives and much more so on this guide. Obligatory sell promo for my Twitch at twitch.tv slash platobear. If you're not following me there, pause this video right now and send a follow my way. Or not. We'll also be focusing on what PCF broke for Pyro with the latest update regarding nodes on the class tree and class mods in this guide, as well as a thorough explanation and example of the trigger sequence packs node. That being said, the August update is the last update Outriders will see as we have confirmation from their Discord that the development cycle for Outriders is over and as it is not a live service title, no further updates are expected. However, the devs have shown a clear intention of carrying on the Outriders IP, so keep an eye out for Outriders news in the future. This pretty much means that what PCF broke with the latest update, including other classes, as well as game bugs in general, will not be fixed. Outriders 2 in the future perhaps? This build and this guide was made in collaboration with the speedrunner god Warai himself. He made sure I got all the details and information correct so that I could relay it properly to everyone. If you guys want to check out god tier speedruns on the pyro, please check out his YouTube. Links in the description down below. Naturally, we'll be covering a speedrun version and I'll also mention the one mod change later in the guide we'll make to make this build just as pog for trials and duos and trios with your friends as well as hard carries. The set bonus we'll be focusing on for this build is Lava Lich. Increase damage of Eruption by 100% and decrease its cooldown by 30%. The skills we'll be using are Ash Blast, Eruption, and Overheat. Ash Blast is going to be our main CC and combined with the Increase Range mod and our Overheat skill will be our oh so satisfying map clear. Ash Blast will also be a damage amplifier thanks to our Death Sentence mod, which applies a debuff to all players in the party. Something I'm going to mention multiple times in this build guide is to please wait 2 seconds to let the Ash propagate before using Overheat for our map clear. Do not Ash Blast, then immediately spam Overheat. If you do this, the Ash will not spread and you will not do damage with your Overheats. Eruption is our main damage source for elites and bossing and also provides a great amount of AoE clear thanks to our mod synergies in Giga Blast and Debris. Volcanoes for everyone. Note that enemies need to be fully spawned on the map before Eruption can target them. Annoying, but it is what it is. For our last skill, Overheat in combination with Ash Blast is what's going to do those satisfying map clears for us. Overheat is also an interrupt skill, which means it'll stagger enemies and CC them. Since Overheat is map-wide, it'll affect all enemies as long as they are not in the effect resist state, which only applies to elites. A very important note about Overheat is that it does additional damage to enemies that are afflicted with burn. Once this extra damage is done to burn enemies, the burn status will be consumed and you will have to apply it again either using Firestorm, Burning Bullets, or Eruptions with our Etna mod. More on these three mods later in the guide as well as the Master Consumer mod which makes Overheat go hard as this mod will allow Overheat to also consume Ash for increased damage but mainly with the ability to consume Ash provides us with the map clears. In case you already forgot, please wait 2 seconds to let the Ash propagate before using Overheat. Again, do not Ash Blast and immediately spam Overheat. If you do this, the Ash will not spread and you will not do damage with your Overheats. Moving on to our class tree, let's take a peek at our class passive. We receive an additional 10% anomaly power and our skills mark damage enemies for 15 seconds and killing a marked enemy heals us by 24% of our max health, so great survivability here as all of our skills mark damage enemies. We'll be looking at our first class tree, which I recommend if you are only playing solo expeditions. This tree will be primarily the bottom tree to pick up Grave to Blaze Capstone and all the anomaly power nodes. The reason we don't go straight up the middle from the bottom tree is so that we can grab the Ash cooldown node in the top tree and still allows us to grab Hot Situation for the Anomaly Power increase. For our second class tree, this is the one I would recommend for solo trials as well as duos and trios for trials and expeditions as well as carries. The main difference here is for the bottom tree, we will be taking both World Ablaze nodes for the total of 30% cooldown for our explosive skills over Mark's accumulation for the damage. From the testing I did, it felt much better having the extra cooldown which in turn made the rotations much more smoother. We're also going to be going straight up the middle tree this time, so we can grab the extinction node for the increase in damage by 20% for enemies below 30% health. Great for the arbiters and the increased HP of enemies in duos and trios. Let's take a quick moment to pause here and go over what I mentioned in the intro for this build guide. 
the August update broke how overheat interacts with key multipliers for Pyromancer. For our class tree, this includes the two ash multiplier nodes in Trial of the Ashes, which provides us with a total of 25 increased damage to enemies that are ashed, as well as two burn multipliers, Trial by Fire, which provides a 20% damage increase to enemies that are burned. This is because overheat consumes the ash and or burn status, and due to PCF breaking this interaction in the August update, we can no longer take advantage of the corresponding multipliers from our class node. This doesn't only affect our class nodes with the overheat skill, as two key mods are also affected in Ash and Boost and Bullet Kindling. Note that for Bullet Kindling, this mod can still be valuable for Eruption, as a mod will be running for our build in Etna applies burn to our targets when using the Eruption skill, so the mod will still have value if you choose to run it. Spoiler alert, we will not be using either Ash and Boost or Bullet Kindling. As for Ash and Boost, you can make the same argument that it'll provide additional damage for Eruption, however the Ash status does not last long enough on Elites for it to help Eruption. The Burn status lasts much longer, so if you really want to run either of these two mods, go with Bullet Kindling. Now, this doesn't mean you can't run the mentioned class nodes and mods for this and other Anomaly Power builds that use Overheat. It's just not ideal in our situation as you're getting so little value since PCF completely broke its interaction with the Overheat skill. Heading to our pack tree, we'll be going full bottom starting with Melting Point. Increase your resistance piercing by 15% when above 80% health and by 30% when below 40% health. This is a great note as we'll also be utilizing the mod to know resistance against the Fortified and Unstoppable Force. More on these later. For our next node, we'll be taking Master Exploder. Explosive skills, in our case Overheat and Eruption, damage is increased by 50% of our resistance piercing. Awesome as we'll have a good amount of resistance piercing in this build, which we'll cover later. Then we move to Convection, which is a required node to move forward. Reduce all skills cooldown by 2 seconds when all skills are on cooldown. This node has an internal 3 second cooldown. We're not going to complain about this node as more cooldown are great for us. Next we have Backdraft. Your anomaly power is increased by 25% for every skill on cooldown. The primary goal for this node is that we will pretty much always have Ash Blast and Overheat on cooldown, so it will make our eruptions hit that much harder. And finally, we have Trigger Sequence. Activating an explosive skill increases the damage of the next explosive skill by 35%. The buff stacks up to 3 times after which it starts anew. Trigger Sequence is the most powerful packs node for AP Pyromancer. With full stacks, your overheater eruption damage will be multiplied by 105%. Trigger Sequence has no internal cooldown, and it does not reset upon level retries. You will know you have at least one stack based on this icon above your health bar. It looks like a bomb icon but the icon does not indicate how many stacks you have. You can use the same explosive skill, for example Overheat, multiple times in a row to stack it. Upon the fourth use of an explosive skill, Trigger Sequence will reset and you will go back to zero stacks, which means no bomb icon. To go in depth on how Trigger Sequence stacking works for the increased stacking damage, let's take a look at this example provided by Warai on the Wellspring Shaman. First and foremost, we currently do not have any stacks of Trigger Sequence active. Remember the bomb icon we mentioned earlier over our health bar? Since it's not present here, this means we currently have zero stacks. Let's continue with the clip. Warai now uses his first overheat. This is important as his primes our next skill, which will be Eruption, to get a 35% increase in damage. You can see now that the Trigger Sequence damage bonus is active, we now have the bomb icon above the health bar. Next, Warai is going to use his first Eruption. What's great about this is using the eruption, we're killing two birds with one stone. Not only did we benefit from the 35% increase in damage, but since we used eruption, which is an explosive skill, this also charges our second stack of trigger sequence. This means when we use our second eruption immediately after our first one, the second eruption does 70% more damage and also charges our third stack of trigger sequence. This means, the next explosive skill war I use is, in this case, overheat. This instance of overheat does 105% increase in damage. Since we used all three stacks of Trigger Sequence, you will now see that the bomb icon above our health bar is gone. Let's take a look at this combo at full speed. If this was still a bit confusing, let's look at this quick little graphic. I'll also have this graphic linked in the description down below. If Trigger Sequence is still headache inducing for you, I'll leave you all with the words of Warai himself. If you're a puss and don't want to deal with the wide variations with Trigger Sequence, you can take the first note coming in hot on the top pack tree instead.
Now that we've done some AP calculus with trigger sequence, let's move on to our ascension points. We'll be wanting our first 10 into anomaly damage. From there, we can focus on points that'll help out our build and anomaly power, resistance peers, status power, damage to elites, armor peers, and increased magazine size. From there, just put points in whatever you want. Transitioning to our gear, we'll first start off with our weapons. Our first weapon we're running is the Funeral Pyre with the mod Shadow Comet, Firestorm, and Claymore Torrent. Shadow Comet and Claymore Torrent are nice to have for additional AoE clear. Remember to tap your Funeral Pyre since the weapon itself doesn't do any damage and we use it for our mod dumping. This means please do not hold the trigger down. This is only wasting ammo. Since this is a shotgun, it is also recommended to not aim down sights and to hip fire instead for the increase in bullet spread. Shadow Comet and Claymore Torrent are mods that multi-proc which means each bullet hit on an enemy drops its own instance of either Comet or Torrent. Moving on to our Firestorm mod, in the Lava Ledge build, we do not have the use of Volcanic Rounds to apply Burn like in the traditional Reload Boost build. Due to this, both Firestorm and Burning Bullets on our secondary have a lot of value. You can use Firestorm to proc on an Elite, then you can Ash and proc Mage's Rage and Fortress from our secondary gun on a different Elite. If your Mage's Rage and Fortress gun also has Burning Bullets, you now have applied Burn to two different Elites without wasting an Eruption. When you then overheat after Ash Blasts, with the Master Consumer mod, more on this later, it's procced on both of these Elites. Almost 100% of the time, Overheat will kill these Elites in solo without you needing to use Eruption. Now you can use Eruption on any remaining Elites to quickly and efficiently clear the battlefield. A perfect example of this is the Pyra God War Ice Frontline run. Make sure to look at the two elite markers on the minimap disappear with this combo. As an added bonus, Firestorm is very powerful when used on bosses. When the bosses take more than one cycle of eruption to kill, Firestorm remains and does a ton of damage over time while continually applying burn. The two mods I recommend on your Funeral Pyre is Shadow Comet and Firestorm if you don't have Claim or Torrent as an Apocalypse mod. Mods like Weakness Trap and Ultimate Storm Whip are also good options for a third mod. For our second weapon, we have a Purple AR with Armor Pierce, which is a nice attribute to have but not entirely necessary with the mods Fortress, Improved Burning Bullets, and Mage's Rage. We already covered why Burning Bullets is great here, so let's focus on Fortress and Mage's Rage. Fortress is great for the 25% increase in damage once fully stacked. Remember, we get a visual indicator of our hands glowing green when at full stacks for the increased damage. Mage's Rage is also great here as crit shots will grant an additional 15% anomaly power bonus that stacks up to 4 times for 15 seconds, allowing our juicy clears with Ash Blast and Overheat. The extra AP from Mage's Rage and extra damage from Fortress also increases pretty much everything we're dealing damage with. Eruption, the Debris Gear mod, burn damage along with Overheat. A purple SMG or LMG works here as well. Just note that the LMG is not preferred as it has a slower fire rate and a very long reload duration, but if you have nothing better, this will do in pinch. The two mods to focus on here would be either Fortress or Mage's Rage with improved burning bullets. Ideal to have all three, but if you don't, focus on those two. A good tip is to Ash Blast first, then shoot a CC'd enemy with your gun to proc Fortress and Mage's Rage so you get the bonus damage, then pop Overheat to clear. Also note that you will lose the Mage's Rage and Fortress bonus if you swap weapons, so do keep that in mind. For our pistols, we have some purples with armor pierce, again nice to have but not necessary. It rolled with Moaning Winds on the Apocalypse slot and it comes with Clip Combustion. Then we added Radiation Splash to make the pistols our one and only reload gun. Make sure you empty your pistols before each expedition or trial so you can just swap to it to instantly get the reload mod activation. These pistols are great for additional damage on elites and just mobs you happen to run by. A Torment and Agony pistol works here as well as it comes with Clip Combustion mod natively. If you don't have a version with all three of these mods, please prioritize Moaning Winds or Radiation Splash with Clip Combustion. Heading to our armor gear pieces, the attributes we want to prioritize are Anomaly Power, Status Power, and Cooldown Reduction. Quick note on Status Power. We want ideally 4 pieces of our gear with Status Power due to the Status Power penalty at higher Apocalypse tiers. This will make sure our Ash status is applied long enough to combo it with Overheat. If you don't have 4 pieces with status power, you can get by with 3, but 4 is ideal. Remember to also upgrade your shards for the attributes as they make a big difference. Starting with our headpiece, we are using the Ronin's Amigasa with Arms and Anomaly, Anomaly Echo, and Death Sentence on the Apocalypse slot. Arms and Anomaly provides a massive 650,000 Anomaly power boost at Apocalypse 40 if we just land a crit shot for 6 seconds. 
The cooldown here is negligible as the buff duration lasts as long as the cooldown. Anomaly Echo gives us a 400,000 anomaly power boost for 6 seconds on skill activation. These mods are great as they provide us with massive bonus anomaly power. The firepower bonus on Anomaly Echo does not matter for this build. For Apocalypse mod, here we have Death Sentence, the best Ash Blast mod in the game. With this mod, our weapon damage and anomaly damage against enemies affected by the skill are increased respectively by 40% and 30% for 5 seconds. Two things about Death Sentence that everyone needs to know. The first, the weapon damage and anomaly damage debuff applies to everyone in your party. That's right, if you are a pyro and use Ash Blast with this mod equipped, everyone in your party benefits from the weapon anomaly damage bonus. Number two, just like the tooltip here says, this damage bonus is active for 5 seconds and is not tied to the Ash status effect. I wanted to mention this detail here as there can be misinformation spread about Death Sentence only working for the user. Rest assured, the debuff works for everyone in your entire party. So you may be asking, why not the Lava Lich Helmet? With the headpiece, you're stuck with Magma Coat, which is a worse version of improved damage mod that we'll be using on our chest. So in this case, chest is greater than the head. That being said, if you don't have a Ronin's Amigasa, it's totally okay to run the Lava Lich headpiece in the interim. Let's once again pause here for another moment. Remember early in the intro, I mentioned that we would only have to make one small mod adjustment when bringing this build into Trials, Carries, or when playing with your friends in Duos and Trios. That one adjustment is swapping Anomaly Echo for Pompeii. This will allow us to have three charges of eruption instead of two. For our chest, we are running the upper robe of the Lava Lich with the mods Captain Hunter, Giga Blast, and Detonator. Captain Hunter is just one of the best mods in the game, and like I always say, it should be in every build. 16% extra damage to elites is never not good. Giga Blast is also extremely good here. This mod increases our eruption skill radius by 100%, meaning eruption will hit more targets for that juicy damage and additional AoE clear. The Apocalypse mod we're running here is Detonator, which decreases our overheat skill cooldown by 50%. Having overheat on a low cooldown is crucial for our Ash Blast overheat map clears. Now if you don't have a good Lava Lich robe, but say you have a good Lava Lich helmet, you can slap on the Ikari chest piece as those come with Detonator. Just make sure you have at least 3 pieces of the Lava Lich set for the bonus. Our pants, we have the lower robe of the Lava Lich with improved damage, no resistance against the Fortified, and a breeze. Improved damage comes with the pants and increases our explosion damage by 1 million at Apocalypse 40. This is a nice combo to have for additional damage on our eruption. The second mod we have is No Resistance Against the Fortified, which increases our resistance piercing by 65% of our armor piercing value. This mod is going to have some really good synergy when paired with our Maxer Exploder Pax Note and our upcoming mod in Unstoppable Force. For Apocalypse mod, we have Debris. When using Eruption, our Eruption throws damaging Debris at enemies, dealing additional 1 million damage at Apocalypse 40. Note that our Debris damage scales with their Anomaly Power, which is a nice bonus to have. If you do not have good Lava Lich Pants, you can go with the Ikari Pants as those come with Anomaly Echo. Just make sure to again have at least 3 pieces of the Lava Lich set for the bonus. Moving on to our gloves, we have the Charms of the Lava Lich, completing our set bonus with the mods Etna, Increased Ash Range, and Power Assimilation. Etna is a super great eruption mod as it provides us with an additional charge of eruption and also makes our eruption inflict burn. Increased Ash Range is a must to have when using Ash Blast as this increases the skills range by 50%. This means more enemies will be CC'd, be affected by death sentence for that juicy damage increase and also means more enemies will be finished off with overheat for again that juicy map clear. As for Apocalypse mod, we have Power Assimilation. This boosts our anomaly power by 250,000 at Apocalypse 40 for each elite on the battlefield. This has a super high cap that you will rarely max out, and as a reminder, those pesky Alpha Perforos also count as elites. Lastly, for our boots, we are running Purple Boots with Anomaly Power, Cooldown Reduction, and Status Power. A very nice role here on the attributes with the mods Phoenix Force, Master Consumer, and Unstoppable Force. Before we get into Phoenix Force, we first need to talk about Master Consumer, one of the best mods for Overheat. Master Consumer allows our Overheat to consume either Burn or Ash status to deal damage, and if you manage to consume both at once, which we went over in the frontline clip earlier, this increases the damage by 150%. Nice. Since we have Master Consumer, which now allows us to consume Ash Essence status to deal damage with Overheat, let's get into Phoenix Force. With this mod, when we use Overheat, we do an additional 70,000 Anomaly Power per status consumed by the skill for 8 seconds. Phoenix Force has a max stack of 10. 
For example, when we use Ash Blast and have 10 enemies ashed, our overheat will get 10 stacks of Phoenix Force and the damage applied will be immediate on our overheat usage. Note that Phoenix Force damage also scales with our class tree nodes. For the Apocalypse mod, we have Unstoppable Force. With this mod, our anomaly power is increased by 50% of our resistance piercing. Thanks to no resistance against the Fortified, resistance piercing nodes on our class and ascension tree, as well as melting point on our pack tree, this mod gives us some nice increase in our anomaly power. If you don't have purple boots with the right stats, that's okay as it's most important to have the mod combination. For example, I was using these purple boots prior to finding my current ones with more ideal stats. Other boots you can use are Akari boots as these come with Master Consumer or Boots of the Reforge as this comes with Power Assimilation. For those that don't have the Apocalypse items just yet, here are a list of 10 mods you want to focus on. Once you get your Apocalypse version of your gear pieces, you can update as you please. For our next section, I wanted to also go over the optimal combo versus the Arbiters in the Trials. As a reminder, make sure to replace Anomaly Echo with Pompeii to get that third eruption charge when heading into Trials or playing in duos and trios or carries. Let's take a look at the combo at full speed first, then go over it step by step. The first thing we'll need to make sure is that our trigger sequence stacks are at zero. Depending on what you were doing prior to reaching the Arbiter, you may still have stacks of trigger sequence active. Just make sure that the bomb icon is not present above your health bar and we're good to go. You can reset your trigger sequence stacks by spamming overheat prior to engaging the Arbiter fight. First, we're going to let the Arbiter get his dumb jump out of the way, then we'll just shoot him with our Firestorm gun so that we have the continual Firestorm damage being applied. We will then shoot the Arbiter with our secondary gun with Mage's Rage, Burning Bullets, and Fortress to proc our mods and then overheat to prep our trigger sequence. We then Ash into three eruptions so each eruption gets its trigger sequence damage bonus. After this, just rinse and repeat this combo without worrying about the trigger sequence and just spam our abilities off cooldown. We only need to worry about the trigger sequence for the first rotation as the fight gets hectic afterwards and we simply need to survive. Simple as that. If you're wondering why we do not Ash first then shoot the Arbiter to proc Mage's Rage and Fortress, that's because the Arbiter has extremely high status resistance and the Ash status does not affect him for that long. This also gives us more leeway on our 5 seconds death sentence debuff window so that our 3 eruptions for sure gets the death sentence bonus for all 3 charges. Now, if you want to do even more damage to the Arbiter for a much cleaner 2 rotation kill and you have the gear swap necessary to make it doable, you can swap the mods Detonator, Phoenix Force, Master Consumer and increased Ash range for more single target damage mods as well as swapping out Overheat for Thermal Bomb with Branded. Here's an example of the Arbiter single target damage when we do have the gear for the swap. This combo is nearly the same as we're using Thermal Bombs instead of Overheat. Remember, Thermal Bomb is an explosive skill so it'll work the same for Trigger Sequence. We'll still open up with our main weapon for Firestorm, then we'll proc Mage's Rage and Fortress into Thermal Bomb, then Ash Blast into our three eruptions. Make sure you do this relatively fast as Branded and Death Sentence debuff both last for 5 seconds. As you can see in this clip, the Arbiter dies in 2 rotations. Here's the ideal setup for the single target Arbiter damage. The first thing you'll notice is that we swapped Ronin's Amigasa for the Helmet of the Lava Lich. This allows us to grab Magma Coat as it comes on the Lava Lich Helmet while not super amazing is still a good choice for us for single target damage. For our chest, since we have the Helmet of the Lava Lich, we can go purple chest piece with Captain Hunter on the Apocalypse slot as we will not need Detonator since we're not using Overheat. Increased Duration is our ideal T1 mod which is pretty common on purple chests to drop as a T1 mod and more Eruption Duration means more single target damage. We also modded back in Anomaly Echo in here as well. Our pants are unchanged. For our gloves, we remove the Increased Ash Range mod to mod back in Arms and Anomaly. We won't be needing the extra ash range here for the Arbiter as the arena is quite small and we can be just in the normal ash range for the death sentence bonus. For our boots, we're swapping out our purple boots to grab Heatseeker's boot as this comes with bullet kindling replacing Phoenix Force and added Branded to replace Master Consumer. Since we're not using overheat for the setup, Master Consumer and Phoenix Force has no value. With all this said, I really want to emphasize this is only something I would recommend if you have the gear swap necessary to pull this off and only for the Arbiter and Trials. Using this specific single target build anywhere else is not ideal and if you don't have the gear swap ready to go, it's just a waste of time as you do plenty of damage regardless. This is something to farm towards to fully complete endgame pyro shenanigans if you're willing. If you don't have the gear swap but still want the satisfaction of two rotating the Arbiter like in the clip, just swap some mods and gears around to experience the damage. In the clip you saw, I swapped some mods and gear around to get it near this ideal setup as I simply do not have the necessary gear for conveniently swapping when fighting the Arbiter. 
Will I keep farming to get the necessary gear swap? Personally, I won't be focusing on it, but if it happens to drop while just naturally playing the game here and there, then I won't complain. Time for our favorite segment, the tips and tricks. Tip number one, please wait two seconds to let ash propagate before using overheat for our map clears. Do not, and I repeat, do not ash blast and then immediately spam overheat. If you do this, the ash will not spread and you will not do damage with your overheats. Number two, target elites or other high health enemies for mages rage arms and anomaly, and fortress procs after ash blast. They are much easier to shoot when CC'd in place. You can then overheat for the juicy clears. Note that we want to target elites or high health enemies, as sometimes your anomaly power is so high that burn will kill your enemies before your gun mods fully proc. Number three, if you have burning bullets on your gun, getting an elite to burn before ash blast overheat will kill or take off much more health with master consumer. We saw this in action earlier on the frontline clip. Number four, Keep in mind that you will lose your Mage's Rage and Fortress buff if you swap weapons. Number 5. Eruption requires the enemies to be fully spawned in to target and proc. Number 6. Do not over eruption a target. While playing solo, almost every enemy can be killed with one eruption apart from bosses. And finally, number 7. Do not hold the trigger on your funeral pyre. One shot procs the mods, remember the guns do no damage and is a mod dispenser. There you have it, finally a pyro guide most of you are asking for. Again, a huge shout out to Warai for all his assistance and proper info into all the pyro interaction shenanigans. Do check out his YouTube, linked in the description down below, and his solo pyro speedrun playlist as well. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned something new about pyro after watching this video, as we really did go in depth. If you have any additional follow-up questions or need clarifications, you can ask in the comments as well. As always, feel free to check out any of my other Outriders World Slayer content that should be popping up now, as well as a full list in the video description below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Bear, and also click the link in the comments to join the Discord homies. I'd also appreciate it if you're able to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for that next Pyro build that Nailer pointed me to, which will focus on Firepower Pyro with the Scorch Zealot set for all the Hadokens. Here's a quick peek if you missed my YouTube short on it a while ago. Until the next one, peace.